And good morning again. This is Rebecca Wood at the Athens County Library. And this will be our last session for a while. Again, we want to thank Shelby, the fabulous support in videotaping and uploading this onto YouTube. And you can access this on the Athens County Library's YouTube station. So check it out. Give us some feedback, comments. Uh, constructive criticism is always welcome. And at least give it a whirl, give it a try, and have some fun with yoga in your home or yoga with your friends and let's hope that next spring we'll be back together again at the Athens County Library and please uh, want to extend some thank yous to the Athens County Library and the Friends of the Library for sponsoring this as well. As you can see out the windows it's getting a little breezy in southern Ohio. A beautiful time of year but it's the time of year that I head south so you might be seeing some I need to import Shelby to Costa Rica. That way they can do videotaping down there. Wouldn't that be fun, Shelby? That sounds great. <laughs> chill, chill, chill. <laughs> All right. We had a great, very brisk morning yoga in the park outside. The weather said it was 50. I don't believe that for a minute. <laughs> so my feet are a little bit numb. We're going to warm them up by just a little bit of gentle interval training here, a little jogging. The more that you activate the arms and get them up around heart height, shoulder height, you're going to increase the blood flow, increase your maximum <clears throat> achievement of um, uh, exercise rate. Yeah, my brain is like going wild well, this morning. So we're going to do that, warm it up, and then shake it out. A little shake it, a little echoing to get centered from one class to the next, and to warm up and find our Tadasana. So try your Tadasana standing mountain pose without looking down first to correct any feet or old habit issues. And that's very telling. We still tend to go back to some old habits, that's okay. It's a lifelong pursuit of finding ourselves in balance in our bodies. So try your Tadasana. Create the platform and the feet and reach the feet into the earth. Engage the quads and draw them up, pulling the energy apart with the feet, feeling the four points of the feet. Core is gently on, shoulders are gently down the back. I prefer my hands at anatomical for mountain pose. And chin is not up in the air, it's sliding and gliding up and in and gently kissing the scapula. Mountain pose is a core of all standing poses. And you can begin to play with mountain pose and your balance by just leaning and listing from side to side and rebounding into safety zones of mountain pose. So be a little playful here and there and then come back to mountain. Recheck the feet positions. Scoop the heels a little bit. Activate those arches. A lot of us have arches that aren't uh, fully developed or flat feet are happening as we age or you tend to roll in or out. I have high arches, but it's always good to work them. We are going to work a little bit today on opening the armpits again. We're trying to remember which one we failed to upload <laughs> or it got lost when we uploaded. But moving the pecs underneath the arm uh, pits, the triceps, biceps, the deltoid muscles here, and the shoulder girdle, and creating a strong shoulder complex girdle. Uh, and we're going to do that by using the wall uh, and doing some strengthening poses on and opening poses on the ground on the mat. And I'm going to show you a few techniques with the tennis balls. You can use the slightly larger my fascia release balls. Tennis balls, pretty handy, most people have them, or any air-filled rubber ball. These might be a little dense for some folks. The smaller the ball, the more pounds per square inch, so the more intense you're going to feel it when you hit a trigger point. You can also put these in a sock, give them a little more cushioning. We're going to use those for a few of the techniques today. And we're also going to use the wall. And I believe we have done this before, but that's okay. We do things periodically. 
over and over again so that we stretch out these areas of our body that we need to. So we started in mountain pose. We're going to turn around and face the wall, our brick wall. It's probably not the best wall in the world to do your yoga on if you don't want to catch your clothing and things, but it's here and it's handy and that's what we're going to use. And we're going to start with a good old wall stretch. So we're going to walk up to the wall. It's kind of handy because I can hold on. And we're going to come up on our toes and push the wall away and slide down as we walk backwards into the room. Coming into wall stretch, it'd be a little nicer for my anatomy to be about four inches wider, so I'm fully shoulder height. But this works, trying to create a 90 degree of the upper torso and lower torso. And then pull the core on. You see how that widens my lower back, the lumbar sacral region, and that feels good. And then you can roll up and back. Arch it up a little and then pull it in. So you're doing some baby cat cows here. It feels lovely. You can let the chin come all the way to the chest. Oh, yes. And then walking up the wall, stepping one foot towards the wall, adjusting the back foot so you're in a comfortable position. Hands approximately shoulder height. Toes can be close to the wall or you can even flex the toes against the wall and begin to sink the front knee into the wall. Try not to cock the hip out. Try to keep them in as much alignment as possible and try to keep the back heel on the floor. And as you descend, keep this hip moving in. The arms gently walk forward, lifting up, stretching up. So we're really stretching out the back of the hands. Beginning to open up the armpits gently here, not very much to start. Breathing, taking a few moments to move into this pose. A powerful pose while stretch. And you move the hands down, step back, come into full wall stretch, or it's like a tabletop here. Drop one arm and circle it around. You'll feel a bigger stretch through the opposite side. So you're beginning to again open that region. And you're also cueing the other shoulder what it feels like to let go. How often do we not let go? Opposite arms. Just swing. It's just swinging on its own, really. It feels lovely. And pushing the earth, pushing the wall away with the other hand. Coming up, we begin to walk up. We bring the opposite foot in. And I would repeat this twice on each side. Adjust how you need so that you feel like you're in good alignment. Sides may be very different, so adjust to be safe, be aware, and mindful. Begin to descend slowly, looking up the wall, keeping the opposite heel into the earth, trying not to cock this long leg hip out. There's the work. This is a lot of work right here. Moving up the wall, you can do some extra stretching by coming up on the ball of the foot. Try not to let this front knee list out or in. Have it where we like it, parked right over those center two toes. And you achieve that by how? Finding the four points of the foot. Also by, by descending that front foot into the earth as much as the back foot. And 
slide down. One more wall tabletop. Again, pull the core in, flatten that lumbar spine. This is so wonderful if you have lower back issues. And begin to walk up. Thank the wall. And spin around. That felt lovely. We're going to work on each arm, each side at a time. And you tend to get rounded shoulders, not just with age, but with all our computer work, so all our computer work, driving. So we need to work this openness of the chest without poking those ribs out. And this is a nice stretch to be able to do that. We're going to just start with one side and one arm up the wall, a little bit above the shoulders. Nice firm Tadasana stance. You'll have to gauge how far from the wall you need to be to be comfortable. Play with that. There is no magic position. Push the wall away. Right there's a lot of work. Push that wall away. Gently roll the opposite shoulder down. This may be enough. You're activating the feet into the earth. You're drawing the quads up. You're opening the hips slightly wide. You're lifting up out of the pelvic bowl. Here's also where gravity collapses us throughout the day. We shrink. <laughs> we need to go back up. And then we're going to begin to step around. Do this slowly because it's a big stretch. If you have uh, shoulder issues, be mindful. Talk to your physician. See what works best for you. But generally, if you don't use it, if you don't open it, if you don't stretch it safely, it's not going to get better. And keep working. I'm looking at my whole class again. I sure miss every person I do. They'll be back, won't they, Shelby? Oh, my goodness. This is a nice stretch right through the pecs particularly. And, okay, here comes autumn, right? Here comes winter. We're all kind of getting tired of this COVID. Uh, virus and now we're going to have normal colds and flu viruses too. So we want to be able to drain that lymph as much as possible and the upper lymph drain right into here. So this is a good way of activating all of that area. You can give yourself a little lymphatic massage while you do this. Go very slowly as you're doing this and take a few minutes to breathe, lift, and then slowly spin back to neutral. I'm going to step a little forward because I don't have a very long wall here. Slide the hand down, point the fingers back, and it's about shoulder height to now. You might adjust where you are uh, in alignment with the wall. It's, it's funny, we all have those old carrying things. This foot usually wants to go there, and I have to work a lot to keep it parallel to help rebuild and protect this hip. We're also going to do a very subtle hip release. And I believe we might have done it once before too, but it's easy, it works, um, and so I encourage you to do it. A Doug Keller technique. So right now is a lot of work, particularly on the, the tunnel, carpal tunnel areas. And I'm going to begin to turn around. So if you're a musician, if you work um, on the computers a lot, or if you just have carpal tunnel issues from any repetitive issue, this is a good one. We'll do a few out of tabletop as well, and then a few of good old Dr. G's hand mints ends to open up those areas. And if you do them, they work. Ooh, I feel it, I feel it. <laughs> hmm. Keep trying to pull the scapula down the back. And release. Ooh. I'll let it go. I now feel like this arm is about two feet longer than the left arm. One more position if you want to go for it. The palm is angled down. And again, you'll have to adjust where you need to be. The arm is a little straighter in this position. It's a little more difficult to activate the muscles to push that wall away here. Standing in Tadasana, having your core on. 
mindful of your posture, and slowly spin into the room. Oh, mercy. Mm -hmm. Got to watch this in a rotator cuff area, cap of the deltoid. Mm, good, 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 good. And then come back. Take this hand against the wall so you can push out slightly and then keep reaching, reaching the hip into the room. And oh, that's a lovely stretch. Bend the inner knee. Oh, that's more of a stretch. <laughs> stretch it out again and walk the fingertip up. Bend the inner knee. <laughs> I feel like I'm Superman trying to push the wall away. Wow. <laughs> stretch. And then you can gently spin around to start the other side. Whew. Shelby's going to cue me when I need to you know to take my break, and we'll finish the other ones on the other side. But I don't know what time we will start, so we'll just play it by ear. So again, the arm is comfortably up against the wall. The core is on. A little action in the glutes and the quads. The shoulder is in its shoulder girdle. It's not hanging down. So you're trying to create a little stability in every muscle group throughout the body. And I slowly begin to spin to the center of the room, like a barber pole. Don't go beyond an injury or pain. We never want to move into pain. We can approach our end range. We can approach the edge of the cliff. And we can ponder, and then we back off. So it's good to challenge yourself. And this is nice for pulling those rhomboids in together, too, along the center of the back, kind of right underneath the scapulas and alongside the erector spinae. Oh, yes, trying to keep equanimity in the hips, and that's a challenge. Big stretch. And again, you can do some lymphatic drawing here, gentle movement. Now clear down. And again, slowly releasing to the center. Anytime you need to drop your arm for a minute or shake it around to readjust, that's fine. Second position, usually a step a tiny bit away. The hand is facing a little more backwards. This wrist is metal. It doesn't bend as much as the other wrist. But I'll still get a good stretch out of it. And it needs the action, too. So I'm beginning to slowly spiral, pushing the wall away as I move into the middle of the room. Why not do some neck circles while you're here? You can add any small movement to these poses, being mindful, working with the breath, come out, shake it out a little bit, and then low, pushing gently the earth away, the wall away, and moving around to the center of the room. You can take the opposite hand and stretch the cervical spine. Try to find the root of the cervical spine, the seventh vertebra. And the hand can gently be guiding the head around. So a little more embodiment technique. The head is doing nothing. The hand is moving the head. It's very safe. It's actually very interesting to let go into the hand while you're doing this. So the head is doing nothing there. You can also do a little strain, counter strain, gently pushing into the head. The head pushes into the hand. And that is a nice release technique. Ooh, spin back. I just let this hand 
hang for a minute. Woo. Still this side is longer. And then we want to do that side stretch into the room. I'm going to be much more cautious on this side for my body. And here's Ooh. your 10 minute signal. Okay, good. 10 minutes is always saying. Great, thank you. And then you want to take a moment to just relax. So I'm going to put my booty against the wall. <laughs> and it's a good way to do some baby uh, stretches for the lumbar spine. Little rocking motions. And this is about the same motion I was doing when we were doing wall stretch. It's also the basis of cat-cow. And you can keep stretching the lower back down. Did you see that move movement? I'm pushing the feet to the earth. I lift and draw down. So I'm lengthening. And, and it really does. It's like a personalized traction. You can keep encouraging the shoulders back, the chin back and up. And for fun, you can add the balls in the ball. So you can lean forward, put the balls right on the top of the uh, sacrum or the iliac crest. I mean, really play with wherever you want. I love the balls. My classes hate the balls. That means they need to use the balls. <laughs> and the ones who do, don't leave home without them when they travel. So these are nice techniques to get into the fascia. And remember, fascia doesn't want to release immediately. And it doesn't need to be pushed really hard. It needs to be engaged. And you need to hold two, two and a half, three minutes. So working on a little patience is also nice. And you'll find some trigger points. You'll find some spots and play with it. You can do this laying on the floor, which we're going to do in the next segment as well before Shavasana. And you can go up and down the sides of the spine, working those muscles, not directly on the spine, and adjust as you need so you're in the soft tissue on either side of the spine, those big, long erector spinae. And this feels good. And you're doing it in micro movements. I'm also working the quads here. My core is slightly engaged. Feet are moving into the earth. And you can just rest in. I'm continually pulling in the core and pushing back into the wall gently. Release safely one at a time and separate the feet here so I can gently stretch forward. You can have blocks if you need support. Get a nice big stretch. coming out safe, so hands on the wall, then, and push up. I feel better already. We're going to end this segment here. Is that about right timing, or how are we doing with that? Good? All right, yeah. And then we're going to end up with a few more using the ball and the wall techniques. Namaste.